We've also tried in electricity to see whether we can put a bit of um, time dimension to, to this investment and see um, from the T1DP, um, sorry, from the electricity 10 year network development plan, which was submitted last year by N3E and on which we have provided an opinion early this year, we tried to add the numbers up to see how much of this investment will come on stream in the near or mid term, how much is sort of longer term, and what is not is, is represented by projects which are not yet mature. And uh, we see that you know it's it's not one third, one third, one third, but it, there are already there are significant investment uh, planned over the next um, sort of five for five years. Um, so around in the order of 40 billion of projects which would be commissioned by 2020, before 2020, so projects which should start or are, have already started but or should start imminently. Uh, on the gas side, uh, the numbers, as I said, are somewhat smaller. We're talking about around 70, uh, um, 70 billion. Um, most of the most of the investment are actually in transmission uh, infrastructure uh, rather than LNG terminals and, and storage facilities. There is still a lot without uh, final investment decision, but um, uh, we expect uh, most of this project or a large number of these projects to go ahead because actually this is actually similar number that one that we have seen in 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 in, uh, in the TYDP and the PCIs. I already mentioned um, infrastructure and uh, an attention to infrastructure has been around for some time and this actually the uh, regulation 347 was the third attempt so as to speak to fix uh, the the problem with infrastructure to make sure that um, the infrastructure which delivers uh, positive benefits are actually developed and completed the first attempt didn't work very well the guidelines from 2006 where there was a long list of projects which at least my reading was that they were mostly uh, the selection was mostly based on political considerations I'm not sure how much there was of economics in that um, and there was no provision for, for for this list to be revised so it was a list which was set up at some stage didn't make much difference and it was sort of lost steam as, as, as time um, passed. I think the importance of the third package with TYNDP is that um, there is clearly a consistent approach at European level. Uh, there is clearly a, an explicit consideration of the net benefits that these projects should deliver, even though it has taken some time before the methodologies for these two to be assessed, for the benefit to be assessed, um, were, were prepared. Um, and uh, as, a, well, as I mentioned already, a strong European dimension. Uh, the new regulation on guidelines for 10 European energy infrastructure is actually based on the third package. I mean, I've heard people say, oh, because the third package didn't work, we need we needed something else. It, it did not address some aspects. It did not address, for example, the long delays in the permitting process. But on the other hand, uh, the PCI process can only work because there is behind it, there is the TYNDP, there is a, a, a sort of a stronger European dimension in network planning at European level. So I, I think this is the way in which uh, I like to interpret 347. 347 has three important components. Um, it has um, a streamlining of the I'll come to that actually, but as a streamlining of the um, permitting process, it has uh, the possibility of reallocation of costs between beneficiary countries, which was not possible or not obvious, obviously possible beforehand, and the fact that some projects were insisting most, most, more in some jurisdiction but benefiting more other jurisdictions. Uh, had actually created, you know, blocked this project because there was no convenience for some of the countries involved in developing this process uh, projects, and and then it has the financing part. But in my opinion, the financing part, even though it has attracted a lot of interest, 
is probably not the most relevant. It's not the one that will make the difference, but we'll be see. Uh, focus is actually on a number of corridors or thematic areas, um, both for electricity and gas. You, you, you know that there are eight geographical corridors. There is in both electricity and gas, there is a sort of north-south interconnection, both in eastern, eastern and western Europe. Uh, and then there is uh, the, uh, the, the uh, Baltic area, uh, clearly a critical part of the European Union, with the Baltic countries in most, case, in most instances being disconnected by the rest of the Union and relying heavily on, uh, on, on, on Russia. And then in the case of electricity, there is the sort of northern seas offshore grid, uh, grids uh, with its initiative, and in the case of gas, there is the southern corridor, the corridor uh, for bringing um, gas to, to, to Europe from Central Asia, from, from Russia, through, through the southern route. So these are the eight corridors. Um, they are overlapping. Germany is actually in all of them. Um, and sometimes the definition is not obvious, but, and, and, and some of them are very big. I mean, the, the, if you see here the maps, I mean, all of them covers, except for BMIP, uh, all of them covers sort of half of Europe or more. Right. Um, now, what is the problem? The problem is that um, the re there was the perception of a gap uh, between what um, what is needed and what could be expected to, uh, to, to, to be developed. The gap is different for electricity and gas, is actually interestingly more in electricity, around one third of what is needed. Uh, the assessment of the Commission was that it would have not been materialized according to the sort of previous uh, regime, and in the case of, of gas it was around one, four, one quarter, one fifth. So um, the, the, the need for new guidelines, the need for, the need for new instruments was uh, to make sure that this gap uh, was going to be filled. Um, if we look at where investments are expected, they're obviously clustered around a number of countries. Um, maybe it's not obvious why most of the investment should be in Germany, maybe just because Germany is in all of the, um, all of the different all of, in all of, of the geographical areas. Uh, uh, Germany, the UK, France, Italy, Norway, Spain, and then the other countries, but they're not uh, distributed evenly, even though, I mean, this is, this is the sort of the, 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 the investment, the, the expected investment, even though, in my view, the value of investment is different. In some, in some regions, these investments are actually needed for security supply or even for security supply slash political reasons. Um, uh, in some areas, uh, security supply has also political dimension and I'm sure all of you uh, understand what I mean. I already mentioned what are the, what is the PCI toolbox. PCI is a project of common interest. It's a new categories of pro categorization of projects. Um, uh, which benefit from specific treatment, um, a, a faster uh, permit granting procedure, three and a half years. The other day I was with Francisco in a seminar, somebody questioned, oh, is it not three and a half too long? Probably yes, but at the moment we were looking at, uh, previously we were looking at 10 years, so it's already cutting, you know, by two thirds. Uh, can we do better? Why not? Two, two, three and a half years is actually the maximum, so if and I believe that for very good projects, projects where everybody, including citizens, believe that there is value, there are opportunities to, cut, to, to, to have a, a, a faster procedure than, than three, uh, three and a half years. There is a more robust regulatory uh, support, as I already mentioned, cross, uh, cost benefit analysis. So Already at the TYNDP stage, we want to make sure that projects which are included deliver positive benefit, not necessarily commercial viability. I mean, commercial, commercially, uh, commercial benefits are only part of the story. There are other benefits which may not be commercial, but still very valuable 
in Europe. Um, environmental benefits, secure supply benefits are difficult to internalize by private parties, but still so have to have a commercial value, but still are very valuable for Europe. Um, uh, CBCA, cross-border cost allocation, uh, re already mentioned this as well. Um, it was the case in the past that infrastructure was not developed because the costs were accruing mostly in one jurisdiction, but the benefits were mostly uh, delivered in another jurisdiction. I will show you uh, a, a, an example under the new regime where a CBCA has actually reallocated costs more in line with benefits. So this is another important, uh, I think, um, innovation in terms of the toolbox. And then there is the, the financing, but as I said, that to me is probably not, not as critical. CB, the CBA is now at the basis. It's not easy to do a cost-benefit analysis infrastructure. I think we, all, we have all realized it. We all knew, but I think we have realized that NSOE and NSOC have actually worked hard to try to develop methodologies. I think they have done an excellent job, but still, we still have concerns and we still believe that there is room for improvement. They submitted their methodologies as expected on the 15th of, no of 15th of November 2013. We provided our, um, our opinion at the beginning of 2014, the agency's opinion, and then the, um, and then, and then the board was passed on to the Commission. CBA would be at the basis of TYNDP, would be at the basis of the selection of PCIs, would be at the basis of cross-board cost allocation. Therefore, it's, an, you know, it's, it's a critical component of the process of making sure that what is planned, what will be developed, what will be paid is actually value for money. I think this is, this is essential. Uh, and if it is value for money for Europe as a whole, there must be an allocation of costs so that the project is also value for money for every jurisdiction involved. And that's another key aspect. And that's why the cost, cross-border cost allocation comes into play. Because we, we want every party involved, every country involved, every member state involved, to benefit or to share the benefit of a project, irrespective of whether the project is located mostly in that jurisdiction and the benefits accruing somewhere else. Um, PCI, um, well, there are some general criteria, there are some specific criteria, perhaps you're, already f you're all familiar with this, so perhaps I can go quickly with, um, with the process. Um, it starts with the TYNDP. It was only the first round of PCI selection, the one that was completed in, in, in October 2013, did not require a candidate project to be a TYNDP project because the regulation came into force after the previous TYNDPs were adopted, so it was a bit of a you know a sort of early implementation, if you want. But since since this time, from now on, it will be um, this will be a requirement. Project promoters submit their uh, proposals, their projects. They have to um, they have to show how these projects meet the criteria for selections, and they also need to provide a CBA. <coughs> Uh, for those projects which are submitted uh, at a mature stage. Uh, NRAs will have to check uh, the, uh, the application of the criteria and the cross-border relevance. Then it goes to the regional group. The regional group are the, the decision-making body. They are composed of member states and the commission, and at the end, the decision will be taken by the member states and the commission, so it goes to them. They come up with a list, regional list, the regional list comes to the agency. The agency checks the consistent application across the different regions of, uh, of the criteria, and then we, we send it back to the, we provide the opinion, and then eventually the member states decide and the commission adopts. It's a long process. Um, it would probably, I mean, in, in, in the first list, it actually was, was, um, um, was compressed within less than a year. But in general, it should last, you know, from the TYNDP to actually the, 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 the adoption of the lease, probably between 18 months and two years. I think these are uh, basic statistics. You, 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 I mean, the first round, there were around 240 projects. Um, 
uh, of common interest, uh, around 100, well, 134 in electricity, and the number of gas is, is um, not a unique one because some projects were alternative to each other, but to my count were, around, were 104 projects. Um, some of them for storage, um, and smart, two smart grid projects in electricity, LNG terminals and underground storage. Uh, so I think this is by now everybody should know by heart. These are maps, you can find them on NSOG and NSOE. Um, I think what I found it more in, well, and then I guess you know this project better than I do. These are the PCIs which, to my understanding, are of relevance to Spain. So there are three in electricity, um, there are, sorry, uh, three in sorry, four in electricity and, and two in gas. Of the four in electricity, three are on the eastern border of Spain with France, the fourth one is with Portugal, and then you have two of them in, in gas. Um, other, other areas in Europe have many more projects, um, but as I said, here you probably know uh, 